Welcome back to Amsterdam for day three of windmill windup. We saw semis in women's and mixed, and then the women's mixed and open finals. We're here to recap the entire event and the last day of play for hard cap. I'm Elliot Trotter for Sky Magazine here with Liam Rosen and Brian Jones. Guys, let's start with the women's division and talk about that women's final. Uh, who came out on top? Uh, Germany's national women's team ended up losing to Lotus, who was the two teams that we knew we were going to see in the final all along. They were winning the Swiss draw, they easily clobbered their, their opponents in the bracket, and but the final was a bit unexpected because you have Lotus, which is an all-star team from Switzerland where there's tons of ultimate talent, beating the German women's national team, which is very highly regarded in the world standings. Uh, one of maybe the top five, top seven in the world. Yeah. So that's huge. And how did they end up beating them? I think they just took it away. We, I, we were watching the German team all weekend and they were really slaughtering their opponents. Uh, and it wasn't that they were necessarily more athletic, but they just played a smarter game, a more consistent game, able to move the disc quite well. They were quite skilled with the disc, putting very strong zone looks on. They ended up uh, playing the uh, Italian national team in the semis, and it was the same story in that game too. So I have to account the stadium setting, I have to account the high winds, uh, and maybe just some exhaustion for this final uh, and that result. So let's jump into mixed. Uh, you guys both watched the the two mixed semis. So what did you guys see? Let's start with you, Brian. I saw a great game between uh, Team Germany and Team France. Uh, first, I thought it was going to be a blowout because France got out to a nice eight to four lead at halftime. After I came back, the Germans just they just didn't stop fighting, and it was an upwind downwind game. And Germany was able to get successive upwind and downwind breaks necessary to get back in that game to force a universe point at nine nine, where. French actually got a little bit lucky. They threw up a pass that kind of hovered in the air. The player that was underneath it stood there for a second, and then the disc just kept floating and was able to come down with it for that 10-9 universe point victory. Hard fought game on both sides, but the French prevailed in the end. And the, the final that I saw on the other side, sorry, the semifinal, was Mubidis versus the Russian national team. The Russian national team, I was telling you guys earlier in the tournament, is probably my favorite team at this tournament because they are so excited, they are so pumped up. Every time they score, they're running onto the field, they're cheering on their fellow people. They also have a, a, a reputation, as well as Mubidis, because maybe not having the best spirit at the tournament. So it was, it was a chippy final. There were high wins, there were lots of calls. Uh, I think eventually they were able to work it out, and Mubidis was more patient with the disc. They they came out with the win and moved on to the final. And let's talk about that final movie disc uh, facing the French national team. Um, it started out with the French national team going up. Movie disc came back, or, or maybe it was the other way around. No, no, movie. Yeah, movie disc was was up the whole time, which was surprising to me. This is it, it, great for Spanish ultimate, which is not considered to be as high level as there is in France. And in the Hall of Spain, there's only 18 to 20 teams. Whereas in France, there's 60 to 80 teams. So movie disc is from the Canary Islands, and it was great to see them dominate this whole tournament, this whole game. They they went up, they stayed up, and they took it. Away. Brian, what sort of strategies did Movie Disc employ in order to uh, win this game, win that final? Uh, really, it was the zone play that was the difference in that game, especially the French relating to Movie Disc or Movie Disc, excuse me. Uh, Movie Disc zone was just too tough for France to deal with, and we saw France just not utilizing the opportunity to hammer over the top. When they did, they were successful. Most of the time, though, they were just trying to go for the quick pass, and it seems like that's the style of European Ultimate. You beat zones by quick, short swing passes, and sometimes that's just not the best way, and Movie Disc really had a zone that took advantage of that, and in the end, it was the difference. Yeah. It seemed that the, the French team just, they had their handlers very tight, they, they weren't able to find shots that broke through the cup, and nothing was doing. They were able to move the disc around plenty, but they weren't really advancing up the field quite, quite enough, obviously, when you able to score. So let's move on to the open final. The Italian team from Bologna, La Fota, facing Free Speed, who we talked to yesterday. And we had some expectations for what Free Speed was going to do in that final. They told us that they were going to play uh, what they called an ugly game. And that is how they won their semifinal so, so handily over Silence, the team from the Czech Republic. And what that meant was a big hucking game putting it deep pretty much every time. It seemed either upwind or downwind and relying on their athletes to come down with the disc. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, Free Speed just had the athletes in this tournament, and not only that, probably the best set of throwers. You can only run that strategy if you can throw in the wind, and Free Speed was able to do that. And what was remarkable in the difference was when Free Speed would make a mistake, was that mentally as a team they were saying, okay, we're okay with that. You would see the receivers dive after it no matter what, no matter how far out of reach it was, and they got up and they didn't appear to be frustrated with their teammates. They expected the throws to just be risky, to be out in front. They were going to have to make some great catches, and you, you know what? With the athletes they have, they made more catches than the Fota did. Another notable thing that I think really put them in the position to win that game was their defense. They put on what looked like at some points a four-person cup. cup. Absolutely. That was that was the difference. It was their defense won them that game. Lafota did not know what to do with it. They couldn't swing through, so they got frustrated. They resorted to hucking it, which with the high wind oftentimes went out of bounds. And that was how they got most of the turns. It was the hard zone four-man cup defense. So free speed walking out with the, the gold medal in this game, the windmill wind up open champions, beating Lafota by a handly, handy amount. Um, so guys, we, we just finished three long days in Amsterdam. There was, uh, there was a ton of entertainment, a ton of exciting ultimate. What, uh, what feelings, what emotions, uh, use emotions more than words if you can, uh, come, come to you about this event? You know, what were some of your highlights? This is the best tournament I've ever gone to as a player, as a volunteer, whatever, simply because of all the stuff that is going on in the background. So in tournaments in the U.S., we have tournaments with way more teams like Pot Lots, which has up to 100 teams, but they do not have the fun aspect as much of it as this tournament does. This tournament, even if you're not playing, you can go to it. And as we said before, it's like a carnival, right? So there's always something going on every time. There's live music, there's tents, there's games, there's alcohol. And that was what made it for me. It was the atmosphere. I, you got to echo the atmosphere. This is, this is not a tournament. This is an event. And the volunteers that talked about it, the tournament director, uh, directors talked about it, how much effort they put into it and adding in extra things, just adding in a guy coming in in a Cadillac and singing songs and taking requests of all-time rock and roll stuff. That, that's just the little things that they just kept on showing up with that made it the best event that I've been to for an ultimate community. And I've been, I've been to U.S. Nationals several times now. There's a buzz when you get there. College National is great. You see all these, you know, you don't go to an event like it for most of the time. And there's all these college teams there, all these parents, all this excitement. And then you come here and it's the same buzz. And, it, you know, it's not the European Championships. It's Windmill Windup. It's their own event. So that's what made it great. People have uh, compared Windmill to something like a Burning Man for the sport of ultimate. Not, not having been to Burning Man myself, I, I couldn't speak to what that comparison sure. draws. But uh, from the sound of it, it very well could be that sort of emotion, that sort of uh, role within the ultimate community in Europe. Uh, another thing that a lot of people have been asking us is the competition level. Um, where European Ultimate is as compared to American tournaments. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we, the results speak for themselves for how uh, these national teams compare to American and Canadian. And, you know, looking at some of the other stronger countries, Japan, Australia, teams that are constantly high in the open mixed and women's rankings, even masters rankings as well. So what are, what are some general insights on how uh, the teams would fare in uh, a U.S. tournament and, and in general? What are some of those differences? Well, I think one thing that has to do is adjust the U.S. style of play. So I've been living in Spain playing Ultimate for about seven months and have had to adjust as well. The play here is a lot less physicality is allowed. So people will get a bit nervous if you're having too much contact on defense or on offense and they'll start calling fouls. Um, another thing is that U.S. teams tend to take care of the disc more. And uh, here we just saw teams, especially in the final, hucking, hucking, hucking all day long, no matter if it was a good look or not. Uh, I think U.S. teams do a lot better job of preventing turnovers and, and that is why the level in the U.S. still remains superior to the level here in Europe. I echo what Liam said, first of all, and I, I think possession is incredibly important to U.S. Ultimate. You see the teams that are able to grind out possessions very successfully. I see a lot of parallels. Well, I see a lot of skill, and I, I see some athletes here. I see people who can throw. So that part of the game, the kind of the pieces or the puzzle, I think, are a little bit there for the Europeans. But really what strategically they need to focus on adjusting in a game and we saw so many times where 
the same thing wasn't working and it would just be like we're repeating it and I talked to some people and it seemed to be that there's this culture of if we our strategy didn't work it was because we didn't execute it well it's not our strategy so I think the idea of adjusting figuring out what other teams are doing and how to counter that is something that needs to be done and you saw free speed today we, when we talked about them they talked about winning ugly and for them they were the team that adjusted most because they said hey in the high winds we're just going to huck it all the time. We're going to take these chances. And for them, that works here because of just the way the strategies are. Teams don't understand the zones as well, and they don't adjust well to them. So I think when you start to see that part of it come into it, the strategic adjustments at halftime, during timeouts, and, and doing different things to counter other opponents' strategies, you'll start to see European Ultimate as a whole start to flourish better. Yeah, and hopefully we can get some American teams out here in the coming years to, to give the Europeans a sense of, of what uh, the sport is like in America for those that haven't already experienced it. And uh, I think this event is going to continue to thrive based on what we've seen here today and for this entire weekend. And that wraps up our coverage of Windmill Windup 2012 here in Amsterdam. I'm Elliot Trotter here with Liam Rosen and Brian Jones for Sky Magazine. Thanks for watching.